Hey everybody, welcome back to my long dormant channel. I'm so sorry I haven't uploaded in ages. To be fair, I don't think my absence was noticeable, but we were in lockdown for over four months in 2021 and you'd think I'd have more time to engage in creative endeavors, right? Wrong. I got distracted. I'd say I was sorry, but I enjoyed being able to just game for a bit and there was something generally exhausting about 2021. Having said that, despite my lack of activity on YouTube, I actually painted a lot. If you want to see more of my work, feel free to follow me on Instagram. Also, considering I'm not some huge YouTuber or amazing art influencer, I think a few videos a year is fine, right? Okay, maybe it isn't, but hear me out. Video editing is scary, and you've seen the quality of these videos. It's really hard. And I think at some point I got intimidated by the process and procrastinated. On that note, I am so sorry for so many ugly shots of my messy gross head. I try to edit them out as smoothly as I could. Here I am showing you a new art project where instead of watercolor, I'm going to have a go at gouache. Early last year, I tried to use gouache at an art workshop and was surprised with the outcome of what was really just a simple sketch. So I decided to try again and paint this lovely Lamasu in a similar style. As you can see, I used an internet image reference and a little figurine. I bought it at the British Museum in London, where I visited in December 2018 during an exhibition about King Ashurbanipal of Neo-Assyria. The drawing process took longer than I liked, because once again, I drew too much detail, and it was going to get covered up by paint anyway. I think the drawing took longer than the actual painting in the end. I think I was worried that I would forget all the details once I started layering the colours in a way that would show all of these small nuances. The Lamasu I'm drawing is based on a set displayed at the Metropolitan Museum in New York. There are other examples of Lamasu, each with their own distinct designs and styles in other museums such as the British Museum, the Louvre in Berlin, Chicago, as well as in their original locations in Assyria, otherwise known as Iraq. Lamasu of this kind were heavily featured in Mesopotamian palace art. They were used as protective deities that guarded the king's gateways and entrances. The main design always depicts the majestic crowned head of a man with the body of a bull or a lion and the wings of an eagle. Each Lamasu is painstakingly carved from singular blocks of stone. They feature delightful and beautiful details such as the florets on the crowns, the subtle smiles, the detail on each feather, even the veins standing out on their legs and finally those beautifully carved ringlets of hair on their head and cheeks. These creatures are a marvel of ancient artistry. They're even wearing earrings. One of the things I overdid when sketching was uh, mapping out the shading, and as a result, like in other paintings, there was too much pencil lead on the paper. Uh, I worried that it could muddy up the pigment once I started applying it. Thankfully, I managed to erase a lot of it, and the consistency of the gouache is a bit denser, so it didn't mix up as much with the lead and retained its vibrancy. Now, I'll have to preface this with telling you that I did very little colour mixing in this painting. More often than not, I just use the colour straight out of the chew. I didn't have confidence in my mixing, so I figured I'd just use raw colours in my palette. I'd learned in some video tutorial a few years ago that gouache mixing was a bit of a delicate art. Light colours could come out dark and dark colours could come out light if they weren't mixed well. Lamassu, whose origins come from roughly 700 to 400 BCE, so that's around two and a half to three thousand years ago, were found predominantly around the ancient capitals of the Neo-Assyrian Empire. So Nimrud and Nineveh, which are mentioned in the Hebrew Bible. They were the seats of power of the Babylonian Empire. However, the term Lamassu is probably derivative from the name Lama, and she was an ancient Mesopotamian goddess associated with protection in the home. It's likely that Neo-Assyrian kings modified her iconography and appropriated it, turning it into a male guardian creature instead, who was designed to guard the palace complex, as well as intimidate visitors with their stature and grandeur. Interestingly though, there are female versions of Lamasu, which are called Apsasu. Maybe through cultural in exchange and syncretism in the ancient world, the Apsasu in particular influenced the iconography and the mythology of the famous Sphinx in both Greece and Egypt. 
As I began to paint, I used a warm to cool color palette to build layers. I began with really deep and vibrant fuchsias and reds, and then built up the layers of details with these warmer shades. Then I transitioned to purples and a few blues until I got to vibrant colors like green and yellow, so that the brighter layers stayed on top. I also ensured I let every layer of paint dry completely before I started a new color, so that they didn't muddy up and get mixed up. This was a habit I had to learn since I'm so used to dumping paint down all in one go. The main thing that stayed in the back of my mind as I painted was to keep it loose and flowy. I wanted to capture the same spontaneity I had with my previous painting. However, because I was trying to emulate something from before, I could have easily started to overthink my method. With my particular style of art practice, I'm never able to capture lightning in a bottle. And usually when I do try to emulate a previous success, I fail miserably. Which is a lesson in itself, I guess. I've had the immense privilege of walking past two Lamassu in the British Museum, and also in the Louvre. They're gigantic, and I can only imagine how visiting dignitaries must have felt thousands of years ago, seeing these four-meter beasts looking down on them as they pass through the main entrance. Another incredible detail on these statues is that they're deliberately designed to be animated and in motion. Lamassu are carved with five legs. This isn't a mythical beast quirk, it's an artistic gimmick. When looking head-on, the Lamassu seem to be standing stationary with their legs together, and as you move past them, the side view shows them in a more relaxed pose, with one leg stepping back. On top of that, these statues, along with the kilometers of carved relief on the walls, would have been brightly painted. I can only imagine how glorious these palaces must have looked like. Sadly, there are more Lamassu statues outside of their country of origin than in their rightful places. Victorian archaeologists such as Henry Laird and Giuseppe Botti did wonderful jobs in discovering and recovering these sites, many of which were completely forgotten and buried over. However, as was tradition of Western archaeology at the time, it also meant that these places weren't so much restored, they were plundered for audiences at home. So incredible were the finds of Layard, for example, that it inspired a new art deco craze in Europe called the Assyrian Revival. Jewelry and even some architecture sought to emulate the style. There's even a 1930s art deco shopping mall in Los Angeles built to look just like an Assyrian palace, complete with its own replica Lamassu. In the past few years, the debate of repatriation of artifacts has been raging in archaeological circles, leading to new ways of carrying on with the practice without outright looting. Unfortunately, many artifacts that had remained in Iraq were destroyed by ISIS in the mid-2010s, prompting sadness over the loss of cultural inheritance abroad, but also internally. Nevertheless, there were foundations that worked to painstakingly scan and analyze existing Lamassu abroad and created almost perfect, beautiful replicas of the lost Lamassu in Nineveh. They were used in exhibits in the Netherlands before being donated to the University of Mosul. This kind of modern reproduction can provide a solution to the sticky repatriation question. Objects can be restored after their destruction, but also repatriated. If it's safe and possible, objects can be returned to their homes, and identical replicas can replace them in their museums. Not only will audiences be able to marvel at their historical legacy, but also admire the artistry and ingenuity it took to make these artifacts, both the originals and the replicas. The foundation, the Factum Foundation, which created these replicas, also created a program in Iraq to teach local young archaeologists to scan artifacts for preservation thus passing modern archaeology to new generations among the very people who will safeguard their own cultural heritage. So here we are. I think the overall result is quite nice. The image feels detailed, but also dynamic. It was really hard for me to let go and just go with the flow, but I think I managed to pull that off. So what should I try next? Should I try another gouache painting, watercolor, or something else? Hopefully I don't tarry too much in posting another video, so I'll Work hard and see what I can show you next. As always, thank you so much for watching and learning with me. Be sure to like and subscribe and share with anyone you might think will like these videos. Also feel free to follow me on Instagram where I post more frequently. Have a safe, creative and lovely day and I'll see you next time. Bye!